This is an alert from Central Dispatch. Major disturbance reported. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. You're listening to the BNC show on the whatever the fuck network this is. Well, 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 hey, look hey, who was hey, back in hey, the damn hey, building. Hey, 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 hey how are hey. you doing? What's up? You look good. I try to. It's the B and C show, season two, episode one. Welcome back. Welcome the fuck back. Wow, this is not a Disney station, so just go ahead and lock the kids up, put the put the put the children away. It's it's really nothing they haven't heard or seen before. Uh, it's just uh, it's just unadulterated. Can't even say the word right. I like that. Unadulterated, I think. I like yeah. that. Unfiltered, I well, like you that. You gotta go with it. You gotta go with it. Unfiltered. Wow, you've been holding that one back on if, if you can't say the word right, at least sound smart doing it. I heard that if you could spell it, you could use it. Nobody said anything about being able to say it right. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. How about that? Well, <laughs> my brain looks like a Swiss cheese, so I'm not really sure what that... I've seen it. I've seen it. I, yeah. I would call it more of a brie. You saw the CAT scan. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't look good. There was a, a weird object in there. They Boy. came out with like a wheelchair because they thought looked I was like 70. A, uh, yeah, it looked like one of them Hot Wheels. <laughs> Mr. Oshawani o- o- or... Uh, o- o- uh, uh, <laughs> How the f- how the fuck you say his name? Oh yeah, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's me. I got it. Well, how the fuck you been, man? Yeah, it's you know, good to I've see been, you. you look good. Uh, you know, I caught that time in the pen, and I went right. on a little vacation, right? Uh, which, which you forecasted multiple times last season. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, so, it is what it is, man. But you know, after a lot of beans and rice, uh-huh. I'm back in the house. Right. All right. Well, we got a lot in store today. We're going to be hitting several things. We've got this what week in history. Uh, we've got two special guests that we'll get into. Excellent. Uh, a lot of new listeners, a lot of old listeners. We appreciate the support. You're listening to the BNC Show, Episode 1, Season 2. We'll be back in 10 seconds. It's it's the greatest show of all time. Welcome back, BNC Show, BNC. Season 2, Episode 1. We've what? got a special guest, good friend of mine, Paul, will be joining us. Paul, how you doing today? What's up, Paul? I'm good. What's up, guys? Just chilling, man. Man, good good to have you with us back on our uh, flagship station, if you will. Yeah, a couple a couple brews going around over here. Right, I don't yeah. Know, you know? Well, all right, can I get you anything to drink? Can I get you something to eat? What can I do for you, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> I got my drink. Uh, uh, I'm good to go. Let's just get this party started. Okay, good. Well, what do you got on your uh, your plate today? One is the uh, Donald Trump uh, conversation that uh, that he had. I'm sure you guys are aware. It's been all over the news. I'd like to talk about that. Yeah, when we get a chance. Yeah, it's, this isn't Disney. We can do it. Like, yeah, we have no... Just don't even go there. Just say there's no restrictions. No restrictions. Okay, we'll go with that. All right, no restrictions, We've Mr. been Ball. fined, but we, right. just, we just balled it up, threw it out I, the window. I just say that we never got it in the mail, and then exactly. they, they send it again, and then it, the, the cycle continues. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, so, you know, obviously the story's been all over the news, and, you know, and as, a, as guys, we've all been there in conversations with other guys where, you know, you're talking about women... Right or wrong, it's happened to all of us, and any guy who says he hasn't had that conversation, it's not telling the truth. I'm not condoning what he said. Uh, I mean, it, and if anyone out there hasn't heard it, they should listen to it to themselves. But at the end of the day, um, I, I also think it's probably embellished. He's probably bragging more than really what happened. And of and course. I think it's very yeah right and 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 I think it's also very ironic how much he he's taking it from the other side and I I'm not one for one party or the other to be honest with you and Chris you know my feelings uh, I think uh, n- no politician really cares about the the normal everyday person to be honest with you not anybody at that level at least right right well yeah first off we've seen his hair. So I've, uh, so let's just get that topic out of the way. And and what you're referring to, if I'm hearing it correctly, is just basically like bar talk, like just locker room, right. bar talk should be amongst men. I mean, I wouldn't go around uh, audio taping C or you <laughs> or otherwise, like anything. Like uh, I've got some fuck? tapes of both of you that I'm just holding. Well, C C does go uh, around. I, knew it. I said I don't. You know. 
I do carry a mobile pre in my truck, though. Right. Well, you know, what's what's crazy is there's been a lot of people that have already placed their vote. Right. So what if you're one of those people, you know, you're, you're in a situation where your feelings might have changed, but you voted early. You know, that's, I mean, what that's do you do? <laughs> what interesting do you do? enough. I mean, I really have to catch up on all the rules of voting, but uh, all I see you can't is change it. I'd, I'd fight for, uh, I'd rather vote for a couple pit bulls in a cage fighting right now. I mean, <laughs> this, this is, <laughs> it's, it's not intelligent what I'm hearing. And uh, Well, you know, what's interesting about this conversation is both of you guys have valid input because both of you guys served in the in the military. And there's a lot of, uh, especially in the climate with the NFL and, you know, this whole thing. And I, I'm, for one, I, I don't like either either candidate. I don't believe in a two-party system, but I do have respect for our military. And that's one thing I, I do want to convey is that mm-hmm. no matter what your political feelings are, please don't take it out on the soldiers that yeah, you guys always, run into. Always support the troops. Right, you know, right. Exactly. Yeah. We go over there for one reason, but, like, coming home is the, the real reason and bringing everybody back is the uh the asterisk on that so whether or not we're there for a, a particular reason which everybody speculates nobody fucking knows weapons of max destruction or oil or you know to give a high five to anybody the real trick is on the lower levels just to get back and take everybody back so my two cents absolutely i, I will tell you as someone who served in the military I honestly think it did me personally a world of good, and I honestly wish our country forced every young person to to serve a couple of years, and I think they'd have a different appreciation for our country and what it means to serve, um, and people need to, to know that, you know? Oh, that's a, I think I think that's very interesting. I think a lot of people, you know, lose it kind of to add on to what you were saying in a different country. You couldn't have this these kind of conversations. They they would lock you up. And, oh, yeah. And it's I, I'm oh, yeah. very happy that whether you agree with protesting or how, you know, current climate at the end of the day, we have the freedom to be able to express ourselves and I think that's that's really big and a big note since we are talking about audio tape uh, and Trump is so much in the media um, what you see in the media about uh, your military wars uh, and I'm assuming all these uh, mass shootings and criminal acts and you know uh, you know uh, political things like you're not getting the whole spectrum so when you're on one side and you, you, you've been, like, just say I've been to war and you're only getting, like, a, a cool 15% of what the real truth is. What's really going on. Like, you on. can only imagine, like, what's going on in the political races and, you know, riots downtown Charlotte or Chicago or wherever. You know, any instance where the media has, like, the complete control of everybody um, actually learning about something. Or at least acknowledging that it's going on, which they fail to do a lot. Um, I think there's just a, a huge misunderstanding on how they portray it and what it really is. And I don't oh, I hear you. I, I yeah, don't pick I hear political sides. And, you know, I was young when I went to the military. I, I'm not quite sure if i do it again or would I, wouldn't I, I don't know. No, I hear you. Well, but, Paul, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, I'm running for president uh, in awesome. the ne- next four years. <laughs> My vote uh, is for you. I've already selected a vice president uh, just because I couldn't give you that job because it's too dangerous because God knows they're going to assassinate me. But I'm, I'm gonna, I'd like for you to be a uh, speaker of house if you could do that for me, if you could if you could pledge to the, to the, to the Chris campaign in the next four years, I'll be, I'll be looking for you. So here's the deal. I got one stipulation. I want the world's largest gavel. So when I call order in the house, I can just slam that sucker down. (laughs) Well, C was once tasked with making the most annoying sound in our technology class. This is true. This This is is a true story. True True story. (laughs) He said, boys, when, 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 when people fall asleep in my class, I want them to wake up immediately. It needs to sound like a fire alarm. But not a fire alarm. It just needs to be annoying. Oh, this is a true story. And we just built the, the worst sound you've ever terrible. heard. It was terrible. And then we played it in the class one day, and all the kids stopped what they were doing. It, so so the project was a success. I take full credit for that. 
<laughs> well, you know what? If you get me that sound, then yes, I'm in. Count okay, in. There you, you got go. it. There you go. So, Paul, we want to keep talking to you. Can you hang out for a little bit longer? We got to take a quick break. Can you hang out for the next segment? Quick five. Take a sip. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. I'm All right. Here. All right, great. We're going to have Paul come back for another segment. You're listening to BNC Show, Episode 1, Season 2. We'll be back in 10 seconds. Duke's Mayonnaise. <laughs> Awesome sauce. You can put that shit on there. I like <laughs> that. That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, Paul's you awesome ad, sauce. Bro. You gotta right. do a little ad. I gotta practice off. that once or twice. I'll fuck that up. Paul's awesome sauce. Okay. You'll, you'll say just, awesome ass or some shit. I just like gotta that. do it slow. <laughs> we'll have to start questioning. Oh, things. totally. I'll fuck that up and then rejoin. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Chris, you know my ass is perfect. Though. Your ass perfect. is perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. He was hammered one time, right? <laughs> he was fucking hammered. That's hammered. a terrible lead-in. This, right this is the this is a perfect example of what happens in a day to day scenario. Advantage of being a manager. <laughs> no, he hits me up and he's fucking hammered and he says like I don't remember what the conversation was exactly, but I was like, oh, you know, how's your ass doing or something. It was like after a, <laughs> like after a loss, like his Panthers lost or whatever happened. And he's like, oh, my ass is fine and my ass is perfect. And, but he was <laughs> he was so hammered that he didn't remember saying that to me. So for the next couple like weeks, I'd be like, Paul, don't worry, your ass is perfect. And he would like look at me weird, like, <laughs> like what the fuck remember. is wrong with him, you know? And I'm like, Paul, don't you? remember like look i had to show him a text message i'm like look at this fucking text message dude you text this to me you started the damn thing that's that's the good insight y'all i mean uh, i still y'all. don't remember saying oh, zero there's got to be good memories and not having memories right i like how you're drinking the uh the panthers bud light yeah i know that's all they sell around uh, here but uh, i'm gonna have to order some <laughs> You kind of like you feel weird. Yeah, I do. I, like it, I do when I wash a Chevy truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating on my truck. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, "I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore." <laughs> Welcome back, B and C, episode one of season two. We have not got kicked off, banned, or uh, not thrown out of the country yet. I've uh, gotten seven texts, and neither, uh, none of them have been like anything negative. None other of them than, been threatening. No. Yeah, I owe taxes in about four countries, but yeah, the IRS calls and some girl named Tisha. I don't, I don't know yeah. who that is. I don't know. From but, Waffle House, right? Right, yeah. and uh, I might have just blacked out. Okay, well, we're back. <laughs> we're back with Paul. Uh, we got a, another episode. Not another episode. See, you see, um, it's no, rust. Well, well, look no, at this you rust. Just, you just yeah, a little <laughs> rust on there, man. You can't paint over rust. You got to sand it down. We got to figure right, this sand out. it down. Now, Paul, you had said something about some weird Halloween costume you've seen. What's going oh. on with that? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I don't know if you guys have heard about this or seen it, but they've come out, you know, every year there's, like, that crazy what's going on in pop culture kind of thing, and it becomes a Halloween costume. So they have made a Kim Kardashian kidnapping victim costume. Have you guys seen this? I have. Kidnapping yeah. victim. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Y'all have to put oh. me up on that. Can you, can you please explain? <laughs> so, you know, obviously she, she was kidnapped in her hotel room five guys with ski masks machine guns they when, are when, when, was she, ho- when was she kidnapped you didn't hear about this was, dude i've been yeah, in the dark like a couple weeks ago it's really? a couple weeks ago in in france while she was there for like a fashion show she these guys um basically um threatened the hotel night clerk to let them into her room so they're in her room she goes back to her room without security or anything she just goes to her hotel room and there's five guys with ski masks and machine guns. They tie her up, they put her in a bathtub, and they steal like five million dollars worth of jewelry that she has. I have so, one. I have one quick question. Yeah. Doesn't Kanye live in Paris? He I don't was know. doing a show here in the states. Yeah, but he, he has a house in Paris. What the fuck is she doing in a hotel room? He cut the show halfway I, through. 
He just walked off stage when he got the news. But oh, yeah, that's please, a real man. Please I'm continue. Sorry. Please I'm continue, sorry. Paul. Oh no, 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 it's cool. I mean, I, I, I don't know any of those specifics, but I can tell you. That I mean, it obviously, it's a traumatic experience, and I don't care if you're a millionaire, if you're a, a bum on the street. Nobody wants to be kidnapped by five people with ski masks and guns and robbed and tied up and thrown in the bathtub. Um, so your personal feelings about her aside, I think it's a very traumatic incident. Well, they've made a Halloween costume. So they've made a Halloween costume where you dress up like Kim Kardashian and you're like, you're tied up, you've got a gag on your mouth, and they're selling this for forty nine ninety nine as a Halloween costume. And on one hand, I'm like, that's kind of funny. But on the other hand, it's like, that's a pretty traumatic thing. And like if it happened to someone in my family, I'd be pissed if somebody made a costume and joke out of it. So I just wanted to get your guys' take on it and what you thought about it. Uh, see you want to do you want to well, start I, this I agree with what he's saying I just I can't have every single girl at the party be dressed like that girl in that movie what was her name you know you know what I'm talking about what, she had, Carrie no no she, it was a new movie uh, the Joker's girlfriend or something you know what I'm talking about she's fucking oh, Suicide Squad the blonde head yeah chick. what's her yeah, name the bomb, the she was in the squad, Wolf yeah. of Wall Street too she's what, hot as fuck she's what's her name what's her name I don't know what's the character's the character's name I don't I know that either. Remember. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, well, everybody in the world knows what I'm talking about. I just can't have everybody dressed like that because if you're on Instagram <laughs> or if you're on, you know, don't any lie. social just media. don't lie. You need variants in your life. I hear you, but I just, <laughs> God, I mean, I, it, you no, know. I mean, I mean. It's like every dude was wearing pirate costumes uh, a couple years ago. Were they? Well, you remember Jack Sparrow was very popular. Was he? I never met him. I never met him. What do you got, Paul? Chris, why, why do you look like a pirate every day? Right. That's my enough. that's my problem is I need to be able to do something different. I, this is how I look all the time, okay? I need... <laughs> <laughs> I can't help the way I look. You just need to be like Muhammad Ali. Just be like, man, I'm so pretty. Right. So basically where we're at, Paul, is I need you to come on. You know, I need you to be on the show on the, on the regular basis. But before we get you out of here this week, what is going on with your Panthers? I met y'all's head coach. He was a nice guy, friendly guy. Uh, what's going on? Super Bowl hangover? Is it real? What's going on, Paul? <laughs> I knew you were going to go down this road. I, I will tell you. Yeah, he, he, he took, he took that left, Paul. He took that I, left. I, I, he did. He did. It's not right. He's hitting below the belt, but that's, I, you know, what else is a pirate going to do? <laughs> 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 so here's what I would say. I, I, two things. One, I think it's a Super Bowl hangover. And then having to play the Broncos the very first game and getting smacked around like we did has put us in a downward spiral. That's one. I think the second thing is, is that we lost a lot of veteran leadership, a lot of guys that really wanted to win a Super Bowl that are no longer on this team. Um, actually, I listened to the coach's um, radio interview today with the media, and he talked about they've got 16 new guys, rookies on that team or new faces. And so it's not the same team we had last year, and it's being proven out. And once you start that spiral of losing, very hard to get out. So if they don't win, mark my words today, if they don't win this week against the Saints, I mean, you can pretty much say the season's lost. And I hate to say that. I'm still going to watch the games. I still wear my jersey and my hat. But if they don't win this week, you Panther can fans are loyal. Panther out. fans are loyal. But, I, you know, to add to that, to add to that, uh, sir, go Paul, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, some stats have come out. I've been listening recently to some sports talk radio, and oh, you, and wow. Cam. Well, it's just been on in the company truck. <laughs> well, I I can't believe this guy. He bought the Oscar Mayer uh, Wiener fucking mobile to, to a, you know advertise for the B and C show. But that right. that's another story. We'll okay. talk about that later. Okay, but, get back to that. Uh, so we're on sports <laughs> talk radio, but I'm hearing that Cam. Uh, uh, Last year was it last year or overall? No, it was overall since his draft. Okay, has had two two hundred more hits as a quarterback than anybody else. And guess yeah. who's second? Probably Russell. Yeah. Russell. Yeah, Russell. Russell exactly. Russell's number yeah. two. It's two hundred and eighty. Yeah, two hundred and eighty more hits than Russell. Wilson and the big topic. Wow. The big topic right now is him having a concussion. I mean, Luke Keekley was three weeks mm -hmm. last year. He missed. Cam, we don't know, man. The man, the man took 
a hell of a beating like a couple uh, a couple weeks in a row. Sure. And he didn't look the same. He didn't sound the same. And we knew it. And there was a whole controversy. So we can't look past that. But the D defense needs to step up. Luke Kuechly is like probably like pulling his hair out right now. I don't know what he's doing to calm himself. Maybe some uh, Zen tea or something. I, I'm not mm. quite sure. But okay. I don't know if you guys know this, but he has a second job, and he's ECPI security, and he patrols houses in other yeah. people's neighborhoods. So oh, that's good, what he's doing. Good, good, yeah. <laughs> and evidently, he uh, has to go in every day to uh, model for being a lawn gnome. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Sir Paul, please come back. We we'd love to have you on next week. Uh, please find schedule, you know, a time in your busy schedule to make a little time for us. We greatly appreciate. It. Sir Paul is in the building. Oh, so we will get you out of here on this, uh, Sir Paul. What is your lock pick of the week? Do you have any uh, super sexy picks for the weekend? Okay, so I'm going to go out on the limb. I'm going to say I hate this that every fiber of my being, but I, I'm going to say that the Dallas Cowboys and their their rookie quarterback and a rookie running back are going to shock the Green Bay Packers. You heard it here first. You heard it here first, Sir Paul. Well, let me let me let me ask him a question. Oh, as go well. ahead. Yeah, get one in if you don't mind. Please, I'm just please. I, I'm a surprise guest. Uh, just just a quick survey. What's your favorite word? Five seconds left. Four. My favorite word. Three. Um, two. Boobies. One. <laughs> boobies. You boobies. heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it there, Sir Paul. All right, thank you, Sir Paul. We'll see you next week. We have one more special guest for you on the BNC Show. We'll be back in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I'm dying to feel what you feel now. You've already been such a sweet one. Welcome back, BNC Show, episode one, season two. I got. Uh, do you th- is, let me, I got to ask you a question, B. Is the this week in history is, is it boring? Is it a boring se- uh, segment? Yes or no? No, I don't think so. I think any bit of knowledge we can pass on to anybody would be great. And you know what? We do have an obligation to fill a little bit of time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll go ahead and run through this. We got our second special guest on deck. We're getting him prepped. So in the meantime, we'll just do a quick little run through this week in history. Are you ready? I'm ready. This week in human history. Oh, I always have to give one thing for the girls. Because they get mad, like we talk sports, and they get mad. I've seen the emails. They get mad. Okay, yeah, so this do. is this is your one girl thing of the show. Great. Okay, so all you Gilmore girl fans out there, in 1890, in this week in history, in Washington D.C., the Daughters of the American Revolution is founded. Now, okay, you might not get that joke, uh, B, but if. These girls are fanatics about the Gilmore Girls show. Well, I don't know what the Gilmore Girls it's a, is. It's a cult show, and they're doing a reboot, and it's coming out and soon. And it's revolutionary setting. Just trust me. No, it's it's not that at all. Just trust me on that. Uh, okay. That's a good joke. Just just, just I'll, trust I'll me. I'll laugh later. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this one is specifically for you, uh, if, if you're ready for this one. I'll Eight, take it. 1899, the Western League is renamed the American League. Oh, nice. I Little like baseball, that. That's a good actually. one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, they got tons of leagues, man. They got the Golden League out there in Yuma. Here's a good one. Now, just to show you how much media has changed, this is uh, 2016 uh, currently, right? Is that is that incorrect or is that... Uh, say that again. What year is it? 2016? Today, or? yes. Okay. Yes, it All is right. in, in dog years. I mean, if you're Jewish, it's like year 5,000. If you're Chinese, it's like in the 3,000s. Wow. Yeah. All right, well, I'll keep going because that, that blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, look into it. I like it. that. I like that. Look into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. <laughs> 1915, CBS is the first broadcast in color. Very nice. Wow, 1950. That wasn't that long ago. That's pretty good, man. All right, here's your space one. 1968, the Apollo program. Apollo 7 is the first successful manned Apollo mission. So it was like, you know, okay. they were still dying trying to get out of the atmosphere. Right, well, so, we're sending yeah. rats and... Right, monkeys. Yeah. They did good. Chimpanzees, whatnot. Right. Uh, let's see, we're about halfway done. Stick with me here. No, well, I just got I just got reprimanded by I have, having a beer on the equipment desk. What, what is the one rule? There's one rule. There's one rule. That's how rusty I am. You had a little rust earlier, bro. I ain't having <laughs> any rust. I said beer you haven't, everywhere, You bro. haven't had any rust at all. Uh, it's actually, I got to compliment you. Well... Zero rust. It's because of the beer. You just pick up and swing the bat. I just hit swing the, hit, it, bro. Hit the damn ball. Right center, right over the fence. Or at right least a fence. double. I called it. 
Yeah. Damn, he, could, he called it? Damn. Yeah, I knew it. All right, well, I'm almost done. Let me get through this. <laughs> so for boring. You, you, I know, boring. <laughs> You're killing the show right now, C. Gosh, God. man, we could be talking about boobies. Right. All right, this is the last one. This is for your nerds. Uh, you know how the cell phone is just completely taken over? Sort of, yes. What do you mean, sort of? Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, well, I, your life lives and dies by it. So you would agree with the fact that the cell phones have taken over? I would not. I think it's something that if you, uh, if you choose to, it can uh-huh. take over. Uh-huh. Uh, it's All something right. that you need to pay attention to because there are stats about how many times a day people uh-huh. look at their phones. Yeah, and it's high as hell. It's outstandingly high, bro. All right, well, this is the last one. Nin- okay. Just to put this in perspective of, of how quick things can change, 1983... <laughs> Uh, oh, the um, year I was born. Right. Great. This is a good year for you. Great time for change. Now, the company is now called AT&T. It was originally known as Ameritech Mobile Communications, and they launched their first U.S. cellular network in, guess, guess the city, big city. Football, not fo- football and baseball. Give guess. Some more than that, I mean. That's a, those are good hints. There's fucking 98 baseball teams uh, out there. A big city, o- older city. Older city. So Fire. East Coast. Fire. Chicago. Bam. Bam. You are smart. I do know my fucking fire. I know that you were planning to disconnect me, and I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. A bee's bubble gum. It'll make your lips smack. Welcome back. You're listening to the B and C Show, B&C. episode one, season two. We got a special guest for you in the building, the founder of Unopened Products, Pyro himself, reporting Pyro. from my not North Dakota. What's going on, guys? I'm asking like like the deep questions. What's the pregnancy rate up there? I mean, y'all indoors all damn day. Yeah. I'm asking. I'm asking the deep questions. I gotta go there. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, pretty high. Let's put it that way. It's pretty high. You okay. There we go. There we go. We're getting around to it now. Now, what's the female to male ratio? Is the hey, that's the big question. No, that but, depends. That depends. Mm-hmm. I mean, what are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the real question is I gotta get down to the nitty gritty Right Is it tough to take off Seven layers of clothes Off a woman man Sometimes it's just hard enough To get the jeans off Right So it brings a whole new meaning yeah, To foreplay I mean long yeah. johns The whole right. big coat Right I just need to but know You say like they don't already Have built in installation Oh okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh I gotcha okay. Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we had to break the ice on that one. So well, to speak. you know, we got some we got some heavy stuff we want to ask you, and you know, we just wanted to kind of lead it in gracefully. Now, I know you're you know a very active member of the community, both in your production and your your creations and your original material, and also you mad respect promoting, and you've been doing it in multiple scenes for a long time. Mad uh, respect, and one of the few guys I know personally. Uh, and I was in the industry for a long time. That is an honest and and real person. And uh, we're friends. And and I always, you know, I always like talking to you. But something's been going on recently that a lot of the media have been ignoring. Uh, and I just wanted to get your two cents on it, if possible. Um, just the Dakota Access Pipeline. The you know the yeah. the protests that have been going on in your area. Uh, you know, we, t- we were talking earlier about media kind of only giving you one side of the coin. Right. And with right. you being in that area, I didn't know if there's anything that you could share or want people to know about what's really going on up there. Well, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, it really comes down to politics and money. It's pretty obvious. With a lot of the things that go on within this country, it all boils down to the politics and money. With that being said, let's put that to the side. Forget politics and money, because obviously that's not going to last. What we're going to last are the side effects of your actions that are happening right now. And that's why they're protesting. They're not protesting because, oh, they weren't offered enough money, because that's what a lot of people are saying up here, that they were offered $20 million, or they were offered $10 million and they wanted $20. Um, they, being the Native tribe leaders, they were offered $10 million by the oil company. And they're like, no, we want 20. So again, setting the money to the side. 
if it's allowed, if they go through with it, and, you know, being humans, we make mistakes. So mistakes are bound to happen somewhere. If it goes to the point, to the extent where it does contaminate the water and the water supply, that river, the Missouri River, you're, you're really destroying a certain part of the environment that, or the ecosystem that's going to have severe side effects, you know? So the pipeline is supposed to run from North Dakota to Illinois, carrying millions upon millions of barrels of oil every day. You know, they're just basically running it to the refineries straight there. So, like I said, mistakes can happen. And that pipeline, you know, it, it, it can be ill-maintained. And maintenance goes, you know, it's, it starts to corrode. It starts to rust over and shit like that. And then, boom, you got, you got yourself an oil leak. How do you see this ending, Pyro? What what kind of is your vision for how this thing's going to pan out? <sighs> wow. Um, it, 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 it it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go through. They're gonna build it anyway. And the only reason I say that because they're not afraid to kill people. It it seems that way. Obviously, I heard a little tidbit about this through C and and uh, essentially just a uh, conversation. But I mean, they're putting dogs on people. They are shooting people. They're arresting people. Yeah. The whole I nine. Mean, the the whole dog incident was um, another thing again with the media trying to yeah. do this one sided thing. They do and, that. You know, you got you got you got these oil companies, they pay oh my God, the money that is floating around this place. Even in Minot, North Dakota, which isn't even an oil town. This is just like its own little town that was started by the railroads and everything. But even around here money is just floating around like it's not there's just so much it's ridiculous how much there's actually around here. Really? And, oh, man, dude, this one job we did, the house that we did it at, the house was worth uh, $2.5 million. There's... And then what they had, that's just where the house was at. That's what it was worth. That's a lot what of they... acres, though, right? I mean, probably no, said no. No, this is literally probably like, shit, dude, like the size of a good, like a good-sized parking lot. You know, it wasn't anything major. You know, we've seen Papa Glenn and, you know, Valentine and all that. We know houses. We know we've seen big houses. But I'm talking about so this place here, that, and then they put $5 million inside the house. But what? You just spent double, so you're up $7.5 million on a house that is not even that big. And just because it's right there on the golf course, like, all right, that, that makes sense. But, you know, they're spending so much money. It sounds um, like, it sounds like that if, uh, if people, you know, thought it was worth something, they bought it up back in the day and they, they, they put the price tag on it. I mean, it was, I mean, those oil lines, I mean, we have Google fiber. That's the only thing I can compare to, uh, right yeah. here. And it's, I mean, that the airport growing things like that all these apartment complexes going up see you've seen the construction uh it's just it's just uh property values going sky high yep and the thing is same there I i see this i see this panning out like they're gonna build it because like i said they're not afraid to kill people and that's the scariest part that is the scariest part because they will start taking people in and just rounding them up they won't they're not gonna care who you are or what you're there for. They know that you're on the other side, so you're coming with us too. Whether you're media, whether you're media or you're just a fucking innocent bystander watching, boom, you get caught up, let's go. You know, they're just going to take everybody. They're not, it, there's no giving anybody an explanation anymore because now you're in a, what they're going to call a war zone. They're going to call them fucking zones of engagement, I guess you could say. Like, uh-oh. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. People have plenty of guns. They have plenty of guns and ammunition. And trust me, I know that for a fact. (laughs) Take hold, man. You need guns and ammunition, but you definitely need some food and water, baby. Yeah. My thing is, what are you going to do when you run out of ammunition? 
<laughs> Would uh, you gonna throw that gun at me? <laughs> Well, this is this is definitely a heavy one, and we appreciate your insight on that. Let's uh, let's turn gears here a little bit. What do you have on your range? What do you got cooking? I know you always got multiple projects going on. What is going on up there? Let's and, hear it. and the new stuff that you got. You've been marinating on the whole pyro thing. Pyro. Yeah. What's up with that? That's that's all. That's good and all. That's that's who. That's almost the alter ego. I guess you can call that. But, um, you, you know, start seeing the different side of that motherfucker. Let's put it that way. Well, I mean, give us a little bit. Because, like, uh, tell us kind of what. Right now, I'm starting to really get into the more, obviously, you guys have been seeing me play the guitar on Facebook. Um, really been getting heavily into instrumentation and getting, getting the band together. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a, it's kind of a band project you got going on. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Oh, excuse me. I was gonna call it Chemical Trail, but with the misspelling of chemical. Now, where can people go to find uh, more information about your projects? Uh, go pyro dot com. Do you mind spelling that for everybody? You know, we got new listeners, yeah. old listeners. Some yeah, some of yeah. these people can't it's, spell. P y r r o h dot com. Cool, right, fantastic. You got a Twitter or uh, Facebook you want people to join up? or uh... Just find me on Facebook. That's the only thing you're going to really get in contact with me personally. Um, P-Y-R-R-O-H, Pyro. Well, I'll tell you what, Pyro, please make time for us uh, in the next week or two. Let's get together again, and thank you so much for making time for us and, and joining us. We loved having you. I got you, man. Hey, thanks, brother. All right, well, make sure you check out Pyro on Facebook. Get Pyro? the spelling right. You're listening to the BNC Show, Season 2, Episode 1. We'll be back in 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. You're listening to the BNC Show on the whatever the fuck network this is. Well, at lunch, uh, the lady at Wendy's did ask if I wanted an extra a little bit of vanilla on top of my Frosty. So I got chocolate, and she was like, do you want a little bit of vanilla on top of it? And, then I was, and she was... She was a, she was voluptuous. I mean, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, I just what I particularly was looking for. I was just in, plan, I was planning on getting some lunch and enjoying a nice frosty dessert. It always is nice to you know be recognized. Let's see, listen, this thing is going to be, the show has been heavy as hell. Okay, we've hit some heavy shit today. It certainly has. Uh, Py- Pyro, we, we've had some great guests, Paul, uh, Matt, on now, but yeah, it's been heavy, bro. I want to lighten it up a little bit, and I want to hit a little virtual reality. It's coming out uh, for the PlayStation this month. Uh, Microsoft has their own version. Google has their own version. And I'm just going to turn it over to you guys, because my first thought is just pornography. Or is that just me? Okay, I, it's my thought now. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, you just kind of set the tone for that. Like now, now, now I know why they invented that. Uh, quick, quick fact check: Who had Jenna Jameson uh, plug and play? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I downloaded a video off LimeWire a few years back. You know, oh, I don't know. LimeWire. Yeah. Lime wire. Wow, yeah. bro. So, I'm pretty sure that's how I destroyed my mom's computer when I was 13. So. Yeah, I've definitely went through a few myself. The plug and play there. The fact <laughs> that I keep them is because of the porn that I had. <laughs> no, but I bring it up because, you know, it looks really cool. Uh, I've talked to some of my, my buddies out, you know, out in the Northwest, and their whole take is that the hardware isn't really there yet. The software is way ahead of the hardware. Um, so my little two cents is maybe wait a little bit. Um, but obviously it's very exciting from being a gamer, us being in the Nintendo generation, it's very exciting to take gaming to this level. Uh, the one thing I will want to get you guys' two cents on is maybe the neurological damage that might come from this. Because think about when you're playing a game, your hands sweat a little bit. Maybe if you're in an online game, your heart may uh, be... What, uh, what, what type of game are you talking right, well, about? Well, are we still... Sweat. Oh. Are we still talking about pornography? No, no, I'm serious. Like, you get no, into an serious. online game, right? Can you back me up on this, Matt, or no? Well, no, I mean, I can't. I've played 
like a game long enough to where like you keep dying at the same spot in the online game I'm not that experienced. I've played a little bit, but as far as dying at the same spot <laughs> and just like getting frustrated, yeah. you played it. You didn't. You've been playing the same fucking spot for about thirty minutes. Yeah, I can see a little bit of sweating. It hasn't happened to me in a while. I think. And I anger. Think, I think, and anger. Like, I think I've gone me... through puberty and st- we're stopping the hand sweat. But no. Well, I mean, <laughs> the hand sweat will always be there, and that too, it goes from puberty to signs of a heart attack. But anyway. Um, uh, as an avid game non-player, I think I went through Halo and like maybe the original Nintendo type didn't of your, game. Didn't get your heart going at all? I I used to slam controllers. Just man. get, I used to get con- mad at that. Yeah. Mad at that. See, damn I can't game. do that, man. If people break t- TVs, they mm. they they. Uh, I mean, I I'm just not into it. I I did play the shit out of Halo with you. All right. I think we we murked that game. Sure. Yeah. And then they had like eight more in a movie. And then the Ninja Turtles came. No, the well, one thing I want to say, I, maybe I didn't make the point clearly. I get it. I I'm really bad at that. But where I'm going with this is when you're just playing against a computer, it doesn't really give you any. It doesn't, you know, doesn't really give you the same excitement as playing against another person online. And so with the virtual reality, to where it's total immersion, excuse me, immersion of all your senses, to where wherever you look, you're seeing these these digital images and stuff like this. What I'm asking is, is this going to have an impact on your subconscious, or maybe even further, is it going to affect our evolution as a species, to where you're fooling your brain? Think about what happens when you dream. You wake up from a dream, you're mad as hell, or you're horny as hell, or you're sad as hell. Like, you're experiencing emotions while you're sleeping in a damn bed. So here we are projecting this visually into your corneas, and just I want to get your two cents on it, because I don't, I don't really think people have, have looked at this topic from that angle, about how deep does this really go. Well, I think it's going to happen. Like, there's definitely going to be some people saying, oh, I'm, I'm messed up because of this situation, but uh, I feel also that that's going to be like uh, kind of like well that's why I'm messed up it, or that's why we're going to take GTA off the shelf is because it's too violent some type of, kind of uh, excuse kind of or something like, I feel like it's going to be an excuse I mean there's probably going to be some situations where this person really is messed up because of this game they played it for too long or they shouldn't have been playing it in the first place but then there's also going to be some situations where they're going to be like oh well this is the reason why Billy's you know hitting people and stuff because He's addicted to virtual reality or whatever. It's like, you know, it's just another version of I want to be gluten-free. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that was good stuff. Uh, like, I have to agree with him uh, in the sense that uh, I just think, it, but I agree with you as well when you were talking about like an enhancement or like a uh, a change in, in our human psyche. Uh, and I think that's, they're both brilliant points. Uh, I just really wanted to touch on the human psyche, which is the same thing kind of you're talking about because you're like the other end of the spectrum, like, oh, did this fuck my shit up? And you have a guy that says, man, I'm enhanced now somehow. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe he's taking DMT. Maybe he's, you know, th- you know, whatever, whatever the situation is. Now, we can talk about it. But, like, you know, we have gamers out there that specifically take certain drugs when they play these games or watch that movie or, you know, all these things. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of cats that do this psychedelic shit. And, yeah, they do it. So, I mean... I mean, that, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. It's not a terrible <laughs> idea. And, and I, mean, I mean, tell me what you think, see. I mean, really. You can really tell that we don't have... <laughs> That we don't have any boundaries because I in any other environment there'd be a producer screaming in his ear. About what? About what? About talking about taking DMT and playing oh, video I love games. It. I love it because this isn't a Disney company. We you can say and and think whatever and feel and talk about. This is what I love about this is yeah we're gonna do a little sports, we're gonna do a little politics, we're gonna make you a little uncomfortable. We're not gonna be able you're not gonna be able to play this show around everybody you know. I walked into the warehouse one day and they were playing one of our early shows. This is not the show for you if you want sports all day. Get on a different channel, okay? I know there's, you know, it will try to give something for everybody, 
But what I love about what we're carving out, we're still playing around. You know, it's going to be loose. It's going to be fun around here. So we want to thank you for tuning in with us. We're going to come back and just close the show out here in just 10 seconds. But thanks again for joining us. Matt, thank you for coming in with us. We love having having you. Uh, You're listening to the BNC Show, Season 2, Episode 1. We'll be back in 10 seconds to close it out. Check us out, youtube.com slash FS Great House. That's youtube.com slash FS Great, G-R-E-A-T, House. We'll see you next week.